Today I'm going to talk about GitHub. GitHub is cloud-based storage designed for software development. So in some ways it's like OneDrive or Dropbox or other cloud-based file services. But the difference is that GitHub was designed specifically for software development and it has some features that really support that in a way that, that those other cloud services don't. Uh, GitHub is the largest repository of uh, software in the world. It's got literally gazillions of different projects on it. And its strong feature is that it allows version control. So this means that it tracks changes to files and allows you to go back in time and, and review what changes were made and when. And in fact, multiple people can work on a project at once and modify files, even modify the same file. And GitHub will track what changes were made by whom. And if there are conflicts where two different changes were made to the same file, it'll help you resolve those. It'll show where those conflicts exist and allow developers to reconcile those. The sort of core piece of GitHub or the core unit uh, is a repository, which is essentially a project. Uh, repository is sometimes called repo for short. Uh, so a repo contains all the files that are necessary for a particular project. So that can be code files, image files, uh, data files, anything that's associated with the project goes inside that repo. And uh, an individual would create a repo using their GitHub account and they would have admin access and control over it. And then they would allow other people to uh, edit the repo. So in terms of access control, you can have uh, an owner and that owner can make the repo either public or private. So a public repo is one that's visible to anybody on the web. Doesn't mean anybody can edit it, but anybody can actually see all of the source code uh, on there and all of the files. A private repo, as it sounds like, is private and only permitted people can see it. So the owner can add people to a repo as uh, other administrators, can add them with write permission if they're developers, or uh, just with read permission, which would be public, or just if a private repo, you could still add people with read permission. Um, and so in that sense, it allows for open source software development, but it doesn't necessarily mean that when a project is open source, anybody can just sort of go in and edit things and break things. The typical workflow with GitHub is that you have the master version of the repo on the GitHub website stored in the cloud, but then you have individual clones of that repo on different developers' computers. So if I'm going to go and start working on a project, I'll make a clone of that repo, which copies all of the files to my computer. I can work on my computer there, edit it, make changes, and then when I'm ready, push those changes back to the cloud. Critically, however, when I'm working on my own computer, first of all, that means I'm not breaking the sort of official version on the cloud. And as I'm working, uh, what I'm going to do is I can save the file, and then I'm going to commit my changes to the repo. The difference between saving and committing is saving just saves the file. Committing says, okay, I'm ready to actually uh, make that part of the repo and track that change. And when you commit, you add a little commit message that uh, is just a short, usually, sentence, uh, maybe two, about what you changed and why. So this allows each developer to test and debug their code uh, on their own computer before committing it uh, to the cloud. Um, and so you commit, you would typically sort of maybe on a work day do a lot of editing, make a bunch of commits for and document sort of each one with what you did, and then at the end of the work day push all of your changes to the cloud uh, to GitHub. Now another important feature that's sort of parallel to cloning is branching. So cloning just means making a copy of the repo on your own computer. Branching means you make a copy on GitHub. So now the repo has its master branch. Every repo has a master branch. But then you create a separate branch for a specific purpose. Say you're, you've identified a bug in the package that you want to fix, or you want to add a new feature to a software package. You'll create a branch specifically to do that work and check out that branch, make all your edits on that branch, and nothing that you do affects the master version. So it allows you to sort of work in parallel. It actually allows multiple developers uh, to work in parallel and uh, work over time without breaking the main code. And this is often important because uh, a lot of projects hosted on GitHub are 
live projects. That means they've been released to the public, people are actively downloading them and using them. So you don't want to break that. You want to wait and make sure that all of your changes are, are vetted and, and tested and, and aren't going to break anything before you uh, merge them back with the master branch. So this is a description of the GitHub uh, workflow and illustration. So you can see the master branch is the one shown in blue that sort of follows uh, the timeline there. And uh, then at the top is your work. So imagine you're one developer. You check out, uh, uh, create a branch, check that out, and make a series of commits as you're working to that branch. And then when you're ready, when you've tested it, everything's ready to go, you can merge that back into the master branch. At the same time, as you can see, some other developer could make their own branch to work on some other bug, fix, or feature, or something like that, make their commits, and then merge that back into the master as well. And each time you merge a branch back into the master, GitHub is going to check for conflicts, meaning differences um, between the master and the branch, and identify those to you and explicitly get you to uh, 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 decide which version uh, to keep, uh, just to make sure that you don't create any conflicts. Another critical feature is that you don't necessarily, when you merge a branch uh, back into the master, you as the individual developer don't necessarily have the ability to do that, uh, or it just might not be a good idea to do it, even if you have that power. So instead, what you do is you create a pull request, and that uh, gets marked on GitHub. GitHub has sort of a, a forum page, essentially, for, for pull requests. And when you make a pull request, everybody who's a developer on that GitHub repo will see the pull request, and they can sort of evaluate it. So this is a great way, once you've uh, decided that, you know, especially say you're adding a feature, um, you don't want to just necessarily push that feature into the software package. You might want to sort of say, hey, I've developed this feature, this is why I did it, this is how it works, and have some discussion with the other developers uh, on the team about whether that's appropriate, did you do it in the right way, and so on. And so the pull request provides that mechanism to have that discussion and then ultimately make the decision to actually merge that into the master. Also helps you identify any conflicts. Okay, so we've got the sort of normal development flow where you have a master branch and then you create other branches uh, to work on specific features, bug fixes, whatever. You can merge those back in. Anytime you're working, you've cloned a copy of the repo, either the master branch or some other branch onto your own computer, make the changes, push it back to GitHub. Another feature is forking. So forking is like branching, except instead of working on that main repo, forking actually creates a copy of the repo. So now it exists on GitHub as sort of a separate thing, independent of that original uh, version of the package of the repo, um, but it's linked. So when you fork a repo, you uh, that repo actually tracks how many times it's been forked and who's forked it. Um, and so this can be useful in, in some cases if you're somebody who wants to just sort of check out some code, see how it works, see how somebody like built their software package. You don't want to be a developer and necessarily contribute to their package, you just want to play around with it. Or sometimes software packages are like little units that you can plug into other software projects that you're working on. And so in that case you might fork a repo and create sort of a new version of it or include it um, in your package. So forking is like branching except it creates a new repo and a new development team uh, can work on that. All right, so what I'm showing you here is an example of a GitHub page uh, with the repo for the textbook for this course, NESC 3505. And you can see it's, it's pretty busy, but across the top you've got a series of tabs like code, issues, pull requests, actions, some other stuff that I won't get into. Um, we're on the code tab and you can see just a list of uh, basically the file structure of this repo. So there's a number of folders uh, for the different chapters labeled 1, 2, 3, uh, some other folders, and then a few files like readme.md, um, toc.yml, intro.md, all those files. For each one, you can see uh, in the middle column is the latest commit message, so the last commit uh, that was made on the textbook to that particular file or folder, and how long ago that was. So you can see the, the sort of date and history of the repo. 
down at the bottom uh, is the actual readme file. So every repo can have a readme.md file, markdown file, and that appears uh, on the GitHub repo page like this. So it's a nice way if you want to include just some basic explanation or introduction for anybody who's viewing the repo as to what it's about. Uh, sometimes you can actually find documentation or like installation instructions if it's software in the readme.md file. Uh, over on the right side, you can see uh, there's like a little about, so you can write a little blurb about your textbook, you can include tags uh, for it. Uh, this one has a GPL 3.0 license uh, associated with it. You can see contributors, uh, me and Rianne at the moment, um, uh, different environments that are active and different languages that are used uh, in the, the project. So that's an example for the textbook, which has a very small uh, development team and, and not a terribly long history at this point. For comparison, here's a real live software package. So ME Python is a Python based package for analyzing EEG data. And it's been around for quite a few years now. And uh, you can see it's on release uh, version 0.20.7. That's the latest version. You can see it was released on June 19th. You can also see over on the right that it's used by a large number of people, over 500 people. Uh, that means they're actively using the, the repository and it's got over 200 contributors. So it's an open source software project and over 200 people have made changes to it and made contributions uh, in, in various ways to the project. Um, and then you can also see the listing of files, the, the history of changes. You can see in their commit messages in that middle column that most of them are tagged as like merge, MRG, main to maintenance one, uh, viz, doc. So they're actually sort of tagging their, their commit messages so you know when you look at the commit um, what it was. Were they adding something? Were they fixing something? Were they adding some documentation? And so on. Across the top two, you can see we're on the code tab, but there's an issues tab. There's 255 issues uh, that have been highlighted. So typically those are like if somebody identifies a bug, they can submit a bug report. So anybody, even if they're not a developer, if they find a bug, can, can create an issue on GitHub, bring it to the attention of the developers, and they can track it and actually mark it as closed once they've solved uh, that issue. You can also see pull requests. So right now there's 30-odd uh, pull requests on there for different changes that are still sort of under discussion by the development team or maybe on pause or, or something like that. Um, so that just gives you a flavor of uh, what a, a full-blown uh, active uh, software package repository looks like. Oh, and the last thing, top right, you can see there's a little fork uh, label and 772 forks have been made of this repository. So it's tracking those as well. So many companies and individual developers use GitHub to distribute their software, uh, and it's the primary site for distributing a lot of software packages. Um, you can do this through forking, or sometimes there's just a download link to, to download the, the repository. Um, and you can also host documentation on uh, GitHub's repository. In fact, most of the time, if it's a full-blown software package, uh, the developers will create uh, fairly extensive documentation and put it on a different site like readthedocs.io. Um, but uh, the readme.md files, uh, for example, can contain basic uh, introductory documentation for a particular package. Or if you don't need a lot of documentation, that might be enough for you. Uh, finally, other uses of GitHub. So GitHub is this cloud-based software platform. Uh, it offers free cloud storage. So you as an individual can go and create an account on GitHub and get uh, uh, create your own repositories. You can store whatever files you want there. You can make them private repositories. The only limits are 100 gigabytes max per repo and 100 megs max per file. Uh, they also offer free uh, web hosting through a feature called GitHub Pages, which I'll cover in a separate tutorial. Uh, and also they support education through GitHub Classroom, which our class doesn't use, but it does provide a way of using GitHub uh, to distribute assignments to students and then actually collect and, and uh, give students feedback through that pull request uh, mechanism. Um, so sort of an interesting application of it. Uh, in our course, uh, I have several GitHub repos going on. Uh, so the official course website with the syllabus and other information is hosted uh, using GitHub pages. Uh, the course textbook is hosted in a separate repo. I showed you that one a few minutes ago. 
and it's using Jupyter Book, which is a separate open source GitHub package uh, that takes uh, Jupyter Notebooks and Markdown files and turns them into a nice sort of uh, website version of a book. And then finally, I have a private repo that I use for uh, developing the assignments and storing them and syncing them. Um, so that's sort of a, a behind the thin theme. All right, thanks very much for watching. And I'm going to cover some very specific uses of GitHub in a couple of other tutorials coming up.